Hey guys, how are we doing? Back in another video from Mother's Basement. It looks like he's starting a new uh, little uh, series, which I appreciate because I love videos about the waifu. Why Hestia is bestia. What's in a waifu? Gonna make a rude joke there, but I feel like it's best not to. Um, I'm still yet to start season two of um, Is It Wrong to Try and Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? I'm leaving a few. I like to leave episodes to go about six, seven, and then start watching them because then you're not waiting. Um, but uh, yeah, Hestia's boss. I love her. She's so ah, rah, and cute, and she got yeah. So do this. Why Hestia is Bestia. Mankind has come a long way in a short time. In a short From time, simple huh? stick huts to towering skyscrapers, mm -hmm. ox-drawn carts to self-driving electric cars. Yes. From cave paintings to anime, and yes. we owe all of that progress <laughs> to a single, all-powerful force that has driven humanity forward since Waifus? the dawn of history. Thirst. Oh. A thirst for knowledge, a thirst <laughs> okay. for understanding, a thirst for truth. I know I'm thirsty as hell, and if you're thirsty too, you've come to the right place. Because I love with it. this series, I aim to quench my thirst once and Yay. for all by finding the ultimate truth. The ultimate answer to the ultimate question, mm -hmm. what's in a waifu? And why isn't it me? Now, obviously <laughs> love is a very love personal thing, and there are as Jokes. many reasons to love a waifu as there are people who love her. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, there are two things every waifu needs. An interesting personality, and a strong, cute character design. Yes. Without the former, a choice of words, I love it. <laughs> I can't be. Without the latter, you just have a good character. Yeah. It is only when those two elements Combined. are executed well and synergize with one another that a character can create that ephemeral, caring, yearning feeling that we call Way. There we go, yeah, from um, No More Heroes. <laughs> analyzing how they excel in those areas and others, it is my belief that we will be able to better understand Moe and work toward the ultimate dream of all mankind. A unified best girl theory. Today we take our first step toward that noble goal by asking, what makes Hestia the bestia? Hestia, if you somehow don't know, was the standout waifu from an entire cast of standout waifus in 2015's yes. fantasy comedy smash hit. Is it wrong to try, try to pick up girls, girls or Dan Machi? Or Dan Machi. There we go. Sure. Yeah. Both that first anime and <laughs> they are on Crunchyroll. New currently airing sequel are available to watch through today's sponsor, Crunchyroll. So if you'd like a bit more context for this serious scientific discussion, serious just scientific a discussion, adventure, love it. I highly recommend watching both of them. Now, without further ado, there's important work to be done. Okay. And speaking of ado, much ado, like too much ado, honestly, has been made about Hestia's titty ribbon, or the plot thread, as some <laughs> plot fans thread. have been calling it. At first glance, the ribbon is nothing but an innocuous, forgettable accessory. Okay. But it has a way of sticking in your mind, because the longer you look at it, the less sense it makes. Even in the realm of <laughs> okay. anime titty physics, where flesh has the consistency of jello and gravity, it bounces everywhere. Suggestion, this <clears throat> ribbon sticks out as an aberration. Less obvious than, say, the Matrix titties in High, High School, School of the Dead, Dead, but in reality, <laughs> no less absurd. What starts as a passing thought about how silly the ribbon looks takes root in your mind and swiftly grows into obsession. Right. With such a thin thread cut into her skin, how does it stay up when her arms are relaxed while My also... God, I never thought about this. Full range of motion. How does There's it support so much to all talk that about. when it's only being held up by tension and friction? How does she actually get into it? Why is nobody in the show questioning this? Huh. Are they mad? Or am I mad? Oh my God. When the series first aired, many fans <laughs> sought to quell this existential terror by trying the ribbon for themselves, no. but in the process, That's they only confirmed our fears. The thread did cut into their arms. It restricted their movement, oh, and most no. of all, it did absolutely nothing to enhance their cleavage. Scientifically huh. minded fans then broke the question. This down is to so daft, I love it. <laughs> similar conclusions. I'm sure that a whole dissertation could be written about that ribbon, but ultimately, we should try to tear our minds away from it because it is just an accessory. An eye catching mm. one, to be sure, that sticks <clears throat> in our mind because of its physical impossibility, but like the bows in her hair and around her neck, as well as her opera gloves, its main purpose is to draw our eye to <clears throat> more important matters and to yes. enhance the core of her outfit, her dress. Which is, by itself, one of the single greatest things ever designed by human hands. With its low, open back, mm -hmm. prominent collar, and high The collar that goes slightly down the back of the top. Is 
essentially a skin tight virgin killer sweater with a boot. Oh, I remember those. Twist on a classic by itself would be a commendable. They were a craze at one point, weren't they? In its simplicity. But consider that Don Machi aired in 2015, mm -hmm. that its first volume was published in 2013, and right. that the virgin killer sweater, an internationally recognized when did that come breakthrough out? in horny engineering, was first revealed to the public in 2017. Oh, ahead of the You'll game. To appreciate how truly groundbreaking. Ahead of the game. Is. Whoa. This dress is a marvel of human ingenuity. It yeah. facilitates the paradoxical simultaneous existence of both side boob and cleavage. It shows off as much of Hestia's back and legs as is physically this is possible, brilliant. still giving her panties something to peek out from. And it strikes a perfect balance between clinging to everything <laughs> that a wants to see clung to while showing a ridiculous amount of skin. And while I'm not a real a man of culture of as well, myself, <laughs> those with more <clears throat> refined tastes will also note that she walks around barefoot. Yes, she does. Pits out. The only classic <laughs> element missing from this equation is absolute territory and thigh highs, but then the lack of that does kind of set Hestia apart from her waifu contemporaries. Huh. And the simplicity of this outfit in both design and color is, I think, a big part of what makes it so memorable and distinctive. Of course, good waifu design isn't just about the outfit. What's around and underneath it is just as important real people don't wear the same thing all the time after all and no, that's true gonna daydream i mean if you do saw that out holding hands with her other aspects <laughs> have to be taken into consideration as well exaggerating one or two aspects of a character's body can go a long way toward making their design more memorable mm -hmm. and i can immediately think of at least two aspects of hestia's design that <clears throat> stand out not to put too fine a point on it but she's stacked She's also short, which only serves to enhance her general air of stacktedness and makes her the attitude makes sense when she's small, yeah. Come off as precocious and endearing. She's definitely playing to a type, and mm -hmm. that's vital in white design because you're more likely to single someone out as your favorite if you feel like they're specifically appealing to you. And yeah. for many weebs, declaring one's undying devotion to a drawing is as much an act of self-expression as it is an act of. Love, Love of course, yes. arguably the most important place. People have body pillows and hook them every day. Is in her hair and I say people. With anime's predilection for candy Promise. colors, Swear. long black hair my girlfriend, isn't I didn't. all that common, <laughs> and it's even more rare to see it. it on a bubbly, outgoing waifu like Hestia. Just seeing such dark hair done up in buoyant, playful twin tails above a bright blue set of eyes feels a bit novel. And the blue that matches the Hestia memorable blue eyes, doesn't it? Of what she's wearing. Of course, those elements do complement and. In the case of her hair, contrast with her usual outfit, as well as her more decorative evening gown, blue. which follows the same color palette and design mm -hmm. quite nicely. But interestingly, they clash a bit with the uniform she's made to wear while walking around town. From the maid uniform she wears at Hephaestus's workshop to the dealy boppers and the pink apron that she has to wear at her food stall, she never quite looks like she belongs. No, it's out of place, isn't it? I That's like that. That's not a bad thing. In fact, it creates the impression that she's self-sacrificing and yeah, she's doing stuff she doesn't need to for other people. Yeah. She's not necessarily comfortable in in order to do her part for it's her good family. At and that. that's the key <clears throat> to good waifu design. You can have all the visual sex appeal in the world, but if it doesn't help us connect with your character, it won't amount to much. Yeah. Now, you can tell that's a decent, lot about helps someone them, yeah. from who they fall for and how they treat them. Hestia, for example, is a shameless romantic, Bell. and she loves Bell precisely because he's a romantic, too. Aww. While he's not physically strong at first, and he's a bit of a naive doofus, mm -hmm. he's optimistic, loving, and humble. And he earnestly believes in the heroic ideal to which he aspires. Between the two of them, she's certainly the more practical one, quick to doubt people outside her family, and even quicker to go after any who she thinks might have designs on Bell. But crucially, even when it makes him vulnerable, she does what she can to nurture Bell's trusting, kindly nature, instead of pushing him to be more cynical and defensive. When Lily is scheming to rob him early on, yeah. for example, she doesn't really step in to stop it. She lets Bell Let handle it, roll it in out. his own way, and run. take a risk that ultimately pays off by converting Lily into a loyal, lifelong friend. So cool and while she's quick to <clears throat> complain and express her jealousy, she also sits back as Bell pursues his feelings for eyes, because she knows that he will only get stronger if he's able to follow his heart. Yep. Literally and figuratively. So she's possessive and she can be jealous, but she's not controlling. And no, that's she wants the best for him. Very admirable. Mm -hmm. Hestia's a great role model, representing a mutually supportive ideal of love that is rare in reality, but 
does exist and is worth aspiring to. And that makes her very easy to fall in love with. Mm -hmm. So, that's not to say she's perfect. Again, she's very prone to emotional outbursts and fits of jealousy. Well, yes, the jealousy she really kicks in at times, isn't it? Her feelings <laughs> she does try to intimidate other women around him, though. She can be smug and confrontational. Her short temper tends to get her in trouble and cause trouble for her friends. And she's, all things considered, pretty damn lazy and a bit of a slob. She will work her phenomenal butt off for someone or something that she really cares about, mm -hmm. but she also spends a good chunk of her life on Earth couch surfing at Hephaestus's place, and she spends just about every second that she's not working or doting on Belle lying around relaxing. In other words, she's got her share of flaws, and those flaws are a vital part of what makes her a good character and therefore a good waifu. Mm -hmm. Every person has their own unique failings and weaknesses, yep. and we need to reflect that in our fictional heroes in order to make them believable. You can't yeah, fall in love it's with not a realistic. character you can't believe is real, after all. It's those true. realistic <laughs> also help us as imperfect creatures. Your brain has to recognize that there could be a possibility that it could be real someday. <laughs> and represent might be attainable for us. This is getting a bit heady for a video essay about why my cartoon girlfriend is awesome, though. We're able to get attached to Hestia because she has that depth, but we start liking her in the first place because she's just really fun and mm -hmm. funny. She brings a cheery, playful feeling to every scene that she's in, chewing the scenery and getting laughs with her exaggerated reactions and pratfalls. She's also pretty damn clever and witty when she needs to be. Some of the most enjoyable moments in Don Machi come when Hestia sits down for girl talk and gets into catty arguments with her fellow goddesses. Yeah, she's it is funny. They are and funny scenes. Boorish attitude, and it's really fun to see her clash with the more arrogant and capricious deities like Freya and Loki and bounce off the more serious, straight-laced ones like Hephaestus. Hestia's very entertaining in just about every scenario she's thrown into because she has fun chemistry with just about every character in Don Machi's cast. And one of the best things about J.C. Staff's adaptation of Don Machi is how hard the studio has worked to bring that fun out of her. After all, in anime, personality comes just as much from how a character is animated as how they're written and Very true, directed. very and true. And this is where all of that great character design is really able to shine. Hestia is the kind of person who wears her heart on her sleeve, and Don Machi's animators <laughs> take that very literally by expressing her state of mind in her outfit. When she's feeling calm and composed, her delicate, unwieldy clothing settles perfectly into place, mm -hmm. but she's generally a bit scattered and ditzy, so when she does something clumsy or gets flustered, which she does fairly often, her twin tails, ribbons, and barely covered uh, body parts tend to reflect that by flying every which way. All over direction, yeah. <clears throat> when she's feeling happy, bubbly, and playful, she looks just ever so slightly disheveled. No matter what mood Hestia's in, though, it always looks like her animators are having fun depicting it. And that makes it fun just to watch her move around. It also helps that as she moves around, various things jiggle and stuff squishes into other stuff. I guess that doesn't have much to do with her personality. It helps. It does do a heck of a lot to advance the plot. Oh, Actually, God. I to take that back. Because a big part of Hestia's appeal as a waifu is that she's actively flirtatious, clinging to Belle when and wherever she pleases, yeah. declaring her undying affection for him she is so funny and laying around in various states of casual relaxed undress whenever they're alone together and a lot of that squishing and jiggling does come about as a result of her active efforts to seduce him if you want to be cynical about it you could say that this explicit forwardness is just an excuse for fan service and a bit of fan service I mean, you in itself. Could a say personality that? trait manufactured by the series author to appeal to dorks who are too socially awkward and dense to pick up on the body language cues and other more subtle signs of attraction action that actual human beings use to communicate with each other, and uh, yeah, guilty. But while that Love fantasy is it. obviously it. unrealistic at best, I think it's a heck of a lot better for lonely otaku to fall for a super devoted waifu who makes an active effort to pursue them than it is for them to be dreaming about groping and peeping on the chaste, demure girl of their dreams by accident. Fantasizing about overly enthusiastic consent is infinitely healthier than no consent at all. That is very true. A bit <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hestia is very much not meant to be an actual human being. Hestia, like every other god in this show, is based on a real historical deity. Mm -hmm. Old timey gods in general tended to be pretty horny it's Greek and mythology, which is something that Don Machi reflects in its characterization of most of its gods, especially the likes of Loki and Freya. While Hestia herself, in her backstory and in the Greek lore that it's based on, right, there we go. chased Yes. <laughs> pure, there's an implication that descending to Earth from Heaven and mingling with the humans 
has prompted many of the gods to become more human themselves, mm -hmm. cut loose a little. And yes, on the one hand, that is obviously, again, an excuse on the writer's part to deliver lots of fan service, but I also Boing. think that it adds an interesting dimension to her character. Hestia has an eternity of wisdom and experience under her belt, but when it comes to human affairs and affairs with humans, she's paradoxically naive and childish, and that apparent contradiction pushes us to want to know more about her. Now, I joked that Hestia is doing a lot to advance the plot, but actually she does, is. and she that's does, one of yeah. the biggest advantages in The Waifu Wars. She's got about as much agency in the story of Damachi as Waifu Bell does, Wars. and gets to make a lot of important decisions that play a role in both creating and resolving each arc's central conflict. She's rarely content just being a bystander or a damsel, even when Bell tries to push her into that role, and that's pretty cool. Beyond being admirable in itself, that agency gives us more reason to care about her, because she's actively contributing to a story that we're enjoying. Yeah, and like, she goes down speaking, into the dungeon. Like she's not meant to do that. <laughs> to, as a community, tend to be active participants in their stories for that very reason. Conversely, if you were following the Darling in the Franks fandom when that was airing, you could almost physically feel Zero interest two. in Zero Two dropping off as she transitioned from being an active character to a passive plot device. Mm. A good waifu is fundamentally I love Zero Two. just a good character who you happen to want to, you know, do stuff with. Chill. And two. And a two, and auto. And so creating oh, a memorable waifu does kind of require pandering to the predilections of your audience, but only to the point that it doesn't get in the way of strong characterization. And Hestia has earned her place in the waifu pantheon by fully embodying, in one sense quite literally, both of these qualities. If you haven't had the pleasure of watching her in Don Machi yet, or you haven't caught up on Hestia Season one was boss like. adventures, then I highly recommend checking her out. I mean, checking it, it out, out at the link in the doo 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 <laughs> on Crunchyroll. The 14 day free trial you'll get by going to Crunchyroll.com. So it is, it is good, like, it is good. And I'd recommend and after watching it, watch the, the um, abridgment that Yara Shien did. How to be an adventurer. Very good. Very good. And newer fare that they add Fire to Force is so worth checking out. So the Abandoned Sacred Beast is good as well. That's class. Right now they've got Doctor Stone, That's Fire good. Force, yeah. Demon Slayer, and Fruits Basket, just to name a few, mm -hmm. as well as the latest episodes of long-running series like Boruto, One Piece, and JoJo. Yeah, but One Piece isn't viewable in the UK. It's so annoying. Anime, where and whenever you want to, easy and fun. To see for yourself how God, 1,108 videos of One Piece. Crunchyroll.com/basement <laughs> to start your 14-day uh, free trial. Oh, let me get into it. Go, though, let me know in the comments below who your pick is for the best girl in Banmachi and which other waifus you'd like to see me analyze in what is shoot like the sixth new series I've started on this channel. Yeah. If you'd like to see more of this or many other discussions about anime and other nerdy stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button too and leave a like if you enjoyed the new format. I'm Jeff Thu, professional, professional shitbag, signing out from, from my mother's, mother's basement. Very cute, very cute. I like it. I hope he does more. <laughs> we love those waifus. Don't we, boys? Don't stay silent. You're making it awkward. <laughs> cool, very cool. I will definitely check out more of those if you upload them. Awesome. So cool. Check it out on Crunchyroll. It is good. Season 1, I loved it. Um, and How to Be Adventure is a very good abridgment topic by Yara Shia. Thank you guys very much for watching. What did you guys think of that? What did you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, comment, right? leave comments down below, let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos, and I'll see you guys. Here's all you guys. Next time.